Hello everyone. Today I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the string class in C++. String is a very important class because a big portion of data processing in real life is about processing text. And there are not many difficult or tricky things about the string class. You just need to get familiar with all its APIs. So I'll be walking through pretty quick. Let's start with the constructors. A string can be constructed from a C string. Hello. So S1 is a string that contains hello. And you don't have to construct a string from the entire C string. You can construct it from a portion of the C string. Three. So S2 will contains the first three characters in the C string. So it will contains H E L. And the string has a copy constructor, so S3 can be constructed from S1. And you can also specify a second parameter, which is number, and it is the starting position of S1 from where you want to construct S3. So S3 will be constructed from this portion of the C of S1. S3 contains LLO. And notice the difference between S2 and S3. This one is a size, and this one is a starting position. And for for this one, you can also specify the size. String S4 is constructed from S1 to 2. And now S4 is constructed from the portion of S1 that starting from position 2 and has the size of 2. So this is starting position. This is size. So S2, S4 contains LL. And we can also construct string S5, 5A, and S5 will contain five characters of A. A string can also be constructed from initializer list. So this is the syntax of initializer list. C and S6 contains ABC. So this constructor is very useful when you have individual characters stored in the char variables. So these are the constructors that you can use to construct a string. Now let's talk about the size. Say S1 equal to goodbye and S1 dot size and s1 dot length these two functions are synonymous they do exactly the same thing they both return 7 s1 dot capacity this one is different it returns the size of storage space currently allocated to S1. So capacity must be bigger than the size. And the capacity can be changed. So if we do S1 dot reserve 100, this will allocate 100 characters of space to the string S1. We can also reduce the capacity of a string S1 dot reserve 5. Now what will happen to S1? These are the five characters of the S1, so I would think S1 becomes good B and S1 dot size will become five. Actually this is not the case. S1 is still goodbye and S1 dot size is still seven. It is important to remember that the reserve function does not change the content of S1. It also does not change the size of S1. It only works on the capacity. And in this case, S1 dot capacity most likely will be 7. It could be bigger than 7, but definitely not smaller than 7. There is another function called shrink to fit. It will shrink the capacity to hold the content of S1. 
And in this case, it has the same effect of calling the resolve function with a small number. Now, the resolve function doesn't change the size of the string, but there's a function called resize, which does change the size of the string. So if we resize S1 to 9, S1's size becomes 9, and it will be padded with now characters. So S1 end up having two more characters of now. And if you don't want to pad the string with a now character, you can ca you can pad it with different characters. Say so 12, and I want to pad it with X. So S1 will contain three more Xs. And S1 dot size, in this case, is equal to 12. We can also resize it to a smaller string, s1 dot resize 3, and in this case, s1 becomes gu. So the resize does change the content of the string, and the reserve does not change the content of string. And I have an error over here. Uh, my length function is missing parentheses. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have. See you next time.